Good evening, everyone. Good evening, brothers and sisters, uh, viewers watching us all over the globe via the internet. We have several platforms that uh, we are using, so uh, we thank you for being here with us watching this uh, praise and worship service Bible study. So tonight we're going to be focusing on 2 Corinthians 8. It's a great chapter uh, talking about uh, specifically self, uh, service, uh, service to uh, the Lord, service to your community, service to your church, service to uh, mankind, and then to uh, the kingdom of God. So uh, we're going to have a, a great uh, study tonight. So I encourage you to... Uh, uh, turn your Bible to 2 Corinthians 8. And uh, so tonight we, uh, I'm going to have a few people here with me uh, to go over that uh, Bible study. And that uh, the way we understand it, we're going to share it with you tonight. And if you have any questions, it's always good so that you share those questions with us so that uh, we can... Uh, we can uh, get your perspective, and at the same time, you can have our perspective uh, with, uh, with uh, that, that subject. So like I said, tonight's subject is on 2 Corinthians 8. We're going to most likely uh, focus some attention to our uh, English uh, viewers and our, our English uh, audience. And at the same time, we'll be focusing on the Haitian Creole uh, viewers that are watching us all over the globe. Uh, we know some of you watching us in Al from Alaska, watching us uh, from Canada, watching us uh, from Massachusetts, watching us uh, from Haiti, watching us from Miami, and so forth. Uh, so that uh, tonight, it's uh, your night uh, to, uh, to study with us and to do the praise and worship uh, with us. Before we start with the service, I will, uh, I will uh, ask everyone to uh, bow our heads so that uh, we can invoke God in this setting so that everything that we do here tonight is in His name and His presence is very, very needed here tonight. Oh God Almighty, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ in this moment. We pray that you bring understanding to this church. We pray that you bring understanding to everyone watching us right now. Everyone who, are, who is ready to be part of this service tonight, we ask that they receive no distraction, do nothing in their way, so that they can uh, praise you, so that they can learn about your word, the word of God, and then so that they can be part of this service by asking questions, by uh, uh, give, uh, come up with their comments, by uh, sharing their perspectives, the views about uh, the uh, portion of the Bible that we're going to be studying tonight, which is Second uh, Corinthians 8. Oh, Lord Almighty, we ask you that uh, you be with us throughout this service tonight, throughout the night, because everything that we're going to be doing is in your name. And if we do have your presence here tonight, your presence will be glorified. Your presence will be a heavy uh, load for us to, to have, because without your presence, we uh, tend to... Uh, go away from what you, what you want us to do, we tend to forget that you are the God of all this universe, that you are the prince of all princes, that you are the king of all kings, that you are the almighty. And that's why we ask for your presence here throughout the service tonight. And we pray that you touch every member that's going to be participating here tonight. From Brother Junior, we ask that you give him the understanding, you give him the word, you give him the speech 
you give him the inside knowledge that he needs to share the gospel with your people here tonight and watching over the internet. At the same time, we ask that you, your presence be with uh, Sister Rachel so that everything that she say is according to your will and your will alone. That everything that she saying can touch many souls here and many souls around the globe who are watching over the social media and the internet. We ask that you be with Pastor Omar, who is going to be here with us tonight to help us understand this portion of the Bible in 2 Corinthians 8. Oh, God Almighty, from his preaching to his teaching here tonight, we ask that you be with him so that you can give him words to share with your students, to give him words to share with your disciples, to give him words to share with your followers here and your followers all around the globe. And God Almighty, I ask you to be with me, to give me the patience, to give me the courage, and to give me the wisdom, and to give me the discernment in everything that I see going so that I can understand you are in the midst of everything so that I know that I have to surrender myself to you and to you alone, O oh God Almighty. And I pray you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bon Dieu, me prie à soi pour avec nous pendant tout service ça. Un service que nous dédié à nous même un service d'adoration avec étude biblique. Un service, bon Dieu, si ce n'est pas présent sous tout ça n'a pas dit, il y a sorti dans la bouche nous et il n'y a pas percé aucun oreille. À souhait à Seigneur, nous demandons, quel que soit le monde qui a participé dans ce service, à Seigneur, nous demandons pour bailler aux paroles, pour mettre paroles dans la bouche, pour faire une éloquence. Yo, éloquence qui sans pareil dans la vie chrétienne. Les yo parler avec éloquence, ou ka pèse en pile zoreye ka koute nou aswe. Zoreye ki la, zoreye ki en Haïti, zoreye ki Miami, zoreye ki tout partout dans le monde, zoreye ki Alaska, zoreye ki Massachusetts, zoreye ki Boston, zoreye ki Montréal, zoreye ki en Afrique, quel que soit côté zoreye sa yé. Pour que parole qu'a parlé là soit à Seigneur, parole ça est capable de pèser et à le faire merveille dans la vie chaque monde ça est capable garder nous dans Internet là. Au l'Éternel, nous prions pour chaque monde qui pourra le parler, parce que parole yo, c'est parole en vain si c'est pas eux même qui mettent parole en bouche yo. Au l'Éternel les amis, tout chant qui pourra chanter à soi, nous mando pour chant ça yo pour parole ça yo qui sorti dans chanter yo pour y aller comme une vibration qui fait dans la vie chaque monde qui attend des chants ça yo pour monde quel que soit côté yo yé pour yo ka danser pour yo ka chanter pour yo ka faire louange au Seigneur parce que où tout côté où est toute bagarre quel que soit côté lié dans le monde et à soi à Seigneur nous prier pour présence pour présence capable toujours là avec nous nous même qui là avec tout ça, yo, cap gardé dans Internet, dans le moment ça. Oh bon Dieu, nous prions au nom de Jésus-Christ, notre Sauveur, qui vit, qui règne au siècle et des siècles. Amen, amen, amen. Et nous allons uh, pour uh, commencer le uh, service d'adoration, uh, service uh, de louange, le service uh, uh, que nous dédions à bon Dieu, un service qui s'en pareil. And now we're going to transition to the praise and worship uh, portion of the service tonight. And then after that, we'll be transitioning to the Bible study. And then I invite every single one of you to be here with us. I invite every single one of you to open your Bible in 2 Corinthians 8. We will be in 2 Corinthians 8. Asweya, c'est ça nous pral étudier. Et il y a un pile parole, il y a un pile bagaille que bon Dieu voulait partager avec chaque grain dans nous. Asweya, et m'invitez nous pour nous parler, nou, pour nous recevoir la parole là. Dans le nom de Jésus-Christ, notre Sauveur. Amen.
Quand les esprits de Dieu habitent en moi, je chante comme David. Quand l'Esprit de Dieu habite en moi, je chante comme David. Je chante, je chante, je chante comme David je chante je chante je chante comme David Of the Lord come upon my heart, I will sing like David sang. When the Spirit of the Lord come upon my heart, I will sing like David sang. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing like David sang. I will sing, I will sing. I will sing like David sang. When the Spirit of the Lord come upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord come upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. I will dance, I will dance. I will dance like David dance. I will dance. I will dance. I will dance like David dance. When the Spirit of the Lord come upon my heart, I will pray like David pray. When the Spirit of the Lord come upon my heart, I will pray like David pray. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray like David pray. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray like David pray. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. Like David sang, I will pray, I will pray, I will pray like David pray. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David dance. I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David. Chante, je chante, je chante comme David. Je chante, je chante, je chante comme David. Alléluia. Merci Jésus, quand l'Esprit de Dieu habite en moi, je chante comme David, je chante, je chante comme David.
celebration of the Lord. Oh, celebrate Jesus. Jesus celebrate Celebrate Jesus celebrate Oh celebrate Jesus Celebrate Jesus celebrate Celebrate Jesus celebrate Come on and celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Celebrate, Jésus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jésus, celebrate, celebrate, Jésus, celebrate. Alléluia, celebrate, Jésus, celebrate, Jésus vivant, il est sorti vivant dans ton blanc. Les vivants pour tout temps. Alléluia. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down. For the joy of the Lord I'm trading my sickness, my sickness. I'm trading my pain. my pain I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord And we we'll say yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Oh, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sorrow. My sorrows. I'm trading my shame. My shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And we sing yes, yes, Lord. And we sing yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse for his promise will endure. That is sure he's gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my strength. them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Let me see 
yes, yes, Lord. You see, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. changer de tresse moi m'a changé rond moi m'a jeté honnête pour la joie seigneur alléluia Do 
see you face to face Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the God that won't run dry Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the God that won't run dry I'm crying, we crying for your presence, Lord pour moi ou face à face pas gagner un autre bagaille qui est capable de satisfaire parce que Jésus Jésus ou c'est une source qui peut sécher Alléluia merci Seigneur
Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and left at all. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy to see you high and left and up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 we cry holy, 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 you are holy, 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 I want to see you, holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. We cry, holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 I want to see you. Chantez cet été, bon Dieu. Chantez cet été. Laisse-nous chanter cet été. Criez cet été. Criez cet été. Nous voulons pour nous. Chantez cet été. Chante cet été, chante cet été, nous voulons pour nous. Alléluia. Chante cet été, nous voulons pour nous, Seigneur. Vide pour voir sur toute la terre. Nous voulons pour nous, lumière, à briller sur toute la terre. Parce que nous voulons pour nous au Seigneur. Permettez-nous capable de lumière qui brille pour nous. 
permettre nous capable une lumière qui brille pour nous Seigneur côté nous passer dans le moment ça nous bénit non nous exalter non nous bon gloire que au même seul mérité parce que c'est bon Dieu nous disons merci pour grâce. Nous disons merci pour compassion. Nous disons merci pour soyer dans la vie. Nous Nous disons merci parce que jusqu'ici, on a porté nos secours. Jusqu'ici, on a caché nous. Jusqu'ici, on fait nos grâces, Seigneur Dieu. Nous disons merci pour présence. Quand nous te chanté, présence sous ce ciel-là pour nous, Seigneur Dieu. Pas de l'autre côté, Seigneur, que nous sommes capables que nos présence sous. Nous disons merci. Continuez. Briller présence sous dans la vie, nous Seigneur, parce que sans présence sous nous pas rien, sans présence sous nous pas voir rien, Seigneur Dieu, nous disons merci, parce que nous capables l'après-midi, Seigneur Dieu, côté nous se fait adoration avec louange pour nous, Seigneur Dieu, parce que où sont Dieu qui digne de gloire, où sont Dieu qui digne de louange, où digne d'adoration, nous disons merci. Pour l'amour, Seigneur Dieu, ou bon nous. Nous disons merci pour tout ce fait pour nous. Nous disons merci pour tout ce qui continue à faire pour nous, Seigneur. Continuez à briller dans la vie, nous. Continuez à briller cet esprit dans la vie, nous, Jésus. Soufflez sur nous, Seigneur. Soufflez sur nous. Soufflez sur nous parce que sans nous-mêmes, nous pas rien. Sans nous-mêmes, nous pas rien, Seigneur Dieu. Ma mando, Seigneur Dieu, ou capable de remplir chaque monde qui est là, Seigneur Dieu. Ou capable de toucher, ou capable pas béni en abondance Seigneur Dieu parce que c'est celle ou même qui est capable de béni en abondance parce que c'est au même seul qui est capable de sagesse c'est au même seul qui est capable de couvrir Seigneur Dieu en bas celle où dans le moment ça Seigneur nous disons merci pour la protection que bon nous nous disons merci pour la vie que bon nous nous disons merci pour le souffle la Seigneur Dieu que bon nous Seigneur Dieu nous disons merci pour tout ce fait nous disons merci pour tout ce qu'on continue à faire Seigneur Dieu ma première de chaque monde Qui à travers Internet, Seigneur Dieu. Chaque monde qui cherche son bagaille. Chaque monde qui cherche son délivrance. Chaque monde qui a une souffrance quelconque, Seigneur Dieu. Où va toucher, où va, où va rendre une visite spéciale, Seigneur Dieu. Que ça y est, Seigneur Dieu. Qui malade, Seigneur. Nous connaissons au même qui docteur ma excellence, papa. Où va toucher, yo. Ça, c'est au même qui n'a pas besoin de piqui. Ou même qui n'a pas besoin de sérum pour guérir. Dans mon dos pour toucher, pour ça y est, Seigneur Dieu. Qui besoin de la vie, la mandon touché spécial, pour ça yo qui couche sous cabane l'hôpital, Seigneur Dieu, pour ça yo qui a souffri, la mandon soulagement, la mandon fou chance encore pour yo, Seigneur Dieu, ma bre met tout ça yo, qui n'a prison, Seigneur Dieu, ma bre ma mandon touché spécial pour yo, ma mandon visite spécial, Seigneur Dieu, papa. Seigneur, nous disons merci pour Frère Junior, Seigneur Dieu. Nous disons merci pour lui, Papa. Maman doit continuer à couvrir lui, Seigneur. Maman doit continuer à balayer plus de talent. Maman doit continuer à cacher lui en bas de grâce au Seigneur Dieu. Pas pour mettre au pasteur l'église là, Seigneur Dieu. Nous touché spécial pour lui, Jésus. Nous touché spécial pour Pasteur Omar, toute Madame lui, Seigneur Dieu. Nous touché, Papa. Nous touché pour le Seigneur Dieu. Nous touché spécial, Seigneur Dieu. Pas quitter au sorti, Papa. Dieu t'es entré à Seigneur Dieu que puissant sous Seigneur Dieu capable remplir que cet esprit capable de cacher en bas ou Seigneur Dieu pas remettre tout tout reste bagage Seigneur Dieu et tu là qui pral fait Seigneur pas mando continue plat prend place sous Seigneur Dieu pas mando Seigneur Dieu pour capable ouvrir que nous ou capable ouvrir l'esprit nous Seigneur Dieu pour capable apprendre Seigneur Dieu de petit ça qui pral fait la Seigneur Dieu Seigneur bénis chaque monde qui l'a Seigneur Béni nous chaque qui l'a, Seigneur Dieu. Ça y est, qui va capable de finir, Seigneur Dieu. Allez, rendez-vous une visite spéciale, Seigneur Dieu. Nous disons merci pour tout ça que tu fait. Nous disons merci pour grâce. Nous disons merci pour présence au Seigneur Dieu. Si nous prions, Seigneur, ce n'est pas parce que nous bon, ce n'est pas parce que nous dignes, mais nous prions au nom de Jésus, petit tout, qui vit, qui règne au siècle des siècles. Amen. Alléluia. Nous disons merci, Seigneur. Merci, Seigneur. Alléluia. Merci Jésus. Alléluia. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, our faithful Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We just thank you, God, for this day that you have blessed us with. You promised us that when we cried out to you, Father God, that you would be here in the midst of us, Father God, and I just pray that today's bible study goes according to your will father god that anything and everything that is said 
is according to you and to your will. Use us as vessels to get the message out to each other and to the message out to anybody else that wants to hear this message. I just pray that everything that is said is not being kept for us to keep on our own, but we are putting it into practice and that we are sending the message out to other people so they could also put it into practice as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we're going we're gonna to transition to the Bible study and we got four, four chairs. The pastor Mark can join us <laughs> in one of those chairs. So we got, uh, Brother Junior and Sister Rachel are so going to be on those sitting there. So, uh, so we're going to do the Bible study tonight. It's going to be mainly in English. I know we got a very uh, vi a vibrant audience right now over the internet that's watching us. So uh, don't forget, if you have any questions, you can send us those questions. You know, it's four of us on, the, on this panel right now. Uh, God will uh, help us understand the, uh, the verses that we're going to go over is on 2 Corinthians 8. Uh, mainly, we're going to focus on Pastor Omar because he preached on Second Corinthians 8. I know God will give him words tonight to teach every single one of us uh, what he, what, what he understands on Second Corinthians 8. And uh, for the Haitian Creole audience, uh, we're going to, for every verse, we're just going to read the verse and we're going to do a special uh, Bible study in Haitian Creole for every single one of you. So, uh, Pastor Omar can get a microphone as well. Uh, yeah. So, so we're gonna transition very quick. So I can tell you, we can we start uh, Second Corinthians for about two months now. We've been studying Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, as we see, it's. Uh, it's where Paul expressed his personal, I would say, opinions, but his personal feeling about everything. You know, in, uh, all the way from, verse, from, from chapter 1 all the way through chapter 8, you see Paul talks about a lot, about a lot that, he, that we can say that is, that's personal to him, but that relate to every single one of us. And one of... Uh, the, in one of the chapter, he talks about how God uh, is a God of all comfort, and then that we are to comfort one another in any situation that uh, one another may feel. We we able to comfort one another. And one in another chapter, Paul uh, talk about his ministry. You know, express uh, his ministry as a ministry of uh, pain, a ministry of sorrow. A ministry of uh, a lot of uh, beating, a lot of uh, riots, a lot of uh, prison time, a lot of uh, lashes. Uh, you know, uh, you see Paul in in that setting talk about uh, who he is as a as a as a believer in Christ, who he is as a, as a servant of God. And in uh, chapter eight today. We're going to see uh, what uh, God want to want share with every single one of us. And I'm pretty sure it's, it's about service, but uh, the, the, the greater message that, uh, in, in that chapter that every single one of us will be able to, uh, to, to understand or to get uh, a perspective on, on service. Pastor Omar, before we start, can you, can you pray for this service? For Father God, we're just coming for you. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for, for this church, this Walk by Faith church, Father God, the pastor and the first lady and Pastor Junior, Father God. We give you thanks, Father God, for, for their service to this church and for the Haitian community, Father God. 
Uh, Father God, we just give this uh, Bible study to you right now, Father God. We lift you up, Father God. We give you all the praise and all the honor and the glory, Father God. Father, whatever we speak here, Father God, whatever we discuss here, Father God, the questions that are asked through Facebook, Father God, all this, Father God, we do it for you and for the glory of your kingdom, Father God. And Father, give us the right words to to speak as we as we sit here uh, and go through your through your word father god because your word was made flesh father god and it, it, it abides and it abides in us father god we thank you father for your son jesus christ in jesus name we pray amen 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 so uh i don't know i i, I did talk to pastor more about how we're gonna do this but uh what do you think pastor more if we uh verse by verse is 24 verse in the chapter right 24 verse yes yeah uh, and i only went all the way up to only uh uh verse seven verse seven uh, those, okay. those are the, the first first <laughs> verse first seven verses are the, the ones that i took my message uh, out of yes um and, and this yes. is uh paul who was trying to talk to the corinthians to try to give them an example about giving hmm. uh you Hallelujah. see um, uh the macedonians uh who uh well well th they were trying to give to judea to Jerusalem, to the yes. churches, yes. to the churches in Jerusalem, yes. and so uh, the uh, the they were going through not only just the Roman oppression, but their own oppression by their own people because yes. they were Christians and they were becoming more and more in their members, yes. and uh, and so the Macedonians were uh, also uh, going through an oppression and a struggle, but they also found themselves giving beyond what they normally would give and they were asking paul if we could give more and yeah. paul wanted to teach the corinthians hey look there are churches out there who are in worse condition uh in poorer and more poor uh, status than than you mm -hmm. and are still willing to do more and above and beyond yes. so paul uh, the apostle uh, let, let them know there's no excuse there's no excuse so that these people that uh, mm -hmm. go into all these as we're gonna see afflict afflicted trials mm -hmm. you know they, they they're able to give so he, there's, there's no excuse and like you said you know it was it was pretty tough for 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 jerusalem and i know in in it in a first corinthians 16 i know paul gave uh like an instruction when he sent titus it sent an instruction hey, when, when by the time i get to you corinthians you know you know i'm going to jerusalem by the time i get to you the money should already or the collection should already be ready you know don't wait until i get there to uh to uh to get the money you know that's something that we learn from this church that uh, uh if anything that we're gonna be giving to the lord it shouldn't be on the back end it's supposed to be in the forefront we give first you know and that's what we learn from 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 that but we, but we can go over verse by verse. Yes, I know, I yes. know you, you go all the way to verse 7. Mm -hmm. But we can go verse oh, by yes, verse. Yes. God, will, God will guide us yes, and what to, yes, what to say. Amen. So let, let's read the, the first uh, verse. And I don't know if uh, uh, First Lady is going to translate it in, in Creole. Uh, the first verse is going to be, uh, more, Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Frère mio, moi ta remen nou konnen ki Jean bon Dieu te fè wè favèl nan l'église ki nan peyi Macédoine yo. Uh and you see in, in this first verse right it talk, he's talking to the church of Macedonia where uh we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. You see they he already know uh, Paul already knew that the churches of Macedonia were already beyond in their grace mode i, I guess it, in a grace mode where it's not just giving mm -hmm. but giving more and above and beyond yes. you, you know like here in your church you you don't have large numbers of people but you know what you give amen. and then you still give outside of your church amen amen amen, amen. Uh, you know now verse one i would like to say two things about Ma macedonia so if you look at corinthians and macedonians so the, uh, the the country of Greece. So in, down south, that's where the the Corinth, the the the, the, the I would say the, the big metropolitan of Corinth. That's where they are. And then Macedonia is uh, it's up north. And then the churches in Macedonia, the the, the three churches in, in uh, that Paul talking about, take as example of uh, 
of, of giving of, of that setting. So we take that example. So, the, so Macedonia up north and then current uh, down south. So, so th for that setting. And then, the, like you said, uh, the grace of God, if you look at, uh, uh, I, I never like to do that, but in, in, six, uh, in chapter 6, verse 1, Paul already said, do not take, uh, do not take uh, the grace of God in vain. And he, he explained that the people in Macedonia, the, the grace of God, it's so good in them, even though they're poor, even though they don't have too much. But because of the grace of God, they're not taking that in vain. They, 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 they use that in a way to serve other people. Yes. It could be also an example of the woman with the might. Yes. Right? That's all she had. Yes. That's all she had, but she was yeah. willing to mm -hmm. give that. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's all she yes. had. Amen. You see? And, Amen. And that's how the Macedonians were. They were so poor and oppressed, but yet they still were willing to give beyond. beyond. E even uh, uh, whatever they had, they were still, they were asking Paul, we want to do. We want to give because we know what the blessings are. We know what grace is, is, is abounding in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so any, any, if, do you have, have anything to say about verse 1? Anything? Uh, Any on this? Uh, the, the grace of God. I, I remember that we sat down a couple of weeks ago. We went over uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 6, um, verse 2, and it talks about the grace of God there. And I remember you mentioned that in the Old Testament, that the grace was, um, that it would, it would lead to death. And... Uh, the grace of God in the New Testament was for us to be believing and speaking. So I, I feel like right here in this um, verse that Paul shows his, um, he considers both the, us to be, give the like, opportunity and the, the willingness to uh, give a gift in the, uh, of the grace of God. No. Shouldn't we say also, Pastor Omar, that uh, by Paul evoking the grace of God you don't think that some situation that we in if we don't have the grace of God we we're not gonna even wanna wanna participate wanna give wanna be part of anything because the grace of God is like a fire you know in you that will uh, help you you know uh, do something and then that, I, I feel like uh, evoking the grace of God on the first verse talking about uh, the Christians in Macedonia, he says that this is what caused them to act like that. Yes, because they, when they do it, they do it. They don't even have to think about it. They 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 do it automatically because of their Christian faith, of the faith that they have in Jesus Christ, knowing that that what they give in return, they will receive uh, 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 better or more. Amen. Amen. So let's go to our verse 2. Uh, it says that, that in great trials of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liber li liberality. Partisan Christio te passé en bas en pile épreuve avec toute souffrance qui te tombé sous yo. Mais yo te si tellement content, yo te montré Jean yo te kabay à tout cœur yo. Malgré your tena necessity. And this, this is what it talks about, that the great, the, in, in a great trial of affliction and an abundance of their joy, uh, their deep poverty. They, they're telling you that the Macedonians were uh, being afflicted. Uh, uh, they were in poverty, uh, but yet they, they were in joy. Yes. Amen. And they were in joy. They, they would be in joy in doing it. Uh, in, in giving and, and in that grace, they had uh, uh, in their affliction, they still had an abundance of their joy. Yes. You see, they weren't uh, uh, sad and and uh, down and out and and not giving. They they gave uh, and they gave it in cheerfully. Uh, and Pastor Junior uh, uh, said uh, on Sunday when I preached, he, he, uh, before I preached it, uh, when he was given the uh, the Bible verse for the offering, uh, he was talking about. Uh, uh, chapter uh, 9, uh, verse uh, 7, 
So let each one, as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly or necessarily, for God loves a cheerful giver. Yeah. And see, so here we see that the Macedonians, mm -hmm. they had an abundance of joy. Yes. And that's what Paul wants us to be. We wants us, when we give, we shouldn't be like uh, grudgingly. We should be in joy yeah. in Amen. giving. Amen. 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 Uh, you know, in, in the NLT version, it says that they are being tested by many troubles. So you see, so in this life that we're living, you know, if, uh, if something bad happening in our lives, we, we tend to turn away from everything that we do in church. You know, and that's to include our services, you know, our offering, our everything. We, 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 we put the troubles in front of us instead of put them behind and continue the, 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 that Christian work. You know, so it says, it says they're being tested. You know, in some situation that you may, you may find yourself in your life, you may, be, you may be being tested. You know, but still, there's an abundance of joy that you need to express because of, because of your faith or through your faith. You know that you serve in a God who is almighty. And then that's the God that got power over everything in this universe, in this world. Amen. Yes, you, you know, the, the testing uh, of them sh shows that they, they uh, persevere. Amen. They, Amen. They, they move forward. They yes. don't stay stagnant. Yes. They, don't, hmm. they don't just stay, uh, hmm. oh, well, uh, we're hmm. oppressed. Hmm. We're we're in trouble. We're having problems. Yes. We're going through affliction. Mm -hmm. Woe is me. Um, I'm <laughs> not going to church today. Or I'm not going to get up. Mm. Or uh, mm. I'm not going to give my tenth uh, of my tithe uh, of my, uh, my, my mm. offering. Or I'm not going to go to uh, help in this church or help in this ministry. I'm mm. just going to be, you know, angry or upset yes. or, this, or let this <laughs> affliction uh, put my, uh, my spiritual uh, life in check mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when it should be Amen. moving forward. Amen. It should be moving forward. Amen. Verse three. You First lady, Pastor uh, Junior, you got anything? You have anything on verse two? Um, yeah, and uh, I know y'all touched up on it already about uh, Luke twenty twenty one. Yeah, about verse, the widow. Yeah, about one through four, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's very true. Like when you say when people become stagnated, you know, in their lives, they they, they just completely stop and they don't want to move forward and stuff, and they start thinking about themselves and everything. But like you said, they said right now, like they have to continue to move forward. And when I was reading that, those verses, I noticed a word called surplus. And I was like, hey, you know what? That's a very powerful word. Yes. I never knew what that word was until I started working at my job. You know, we have all of our furniture inside of our classrooms. Mm -hmm. And whatever is not needed, we put it away in the back. You know, those are things that we're just going to get because it's extra and we really don't need it. It doesn't mean really nothing to us. Right. And uh, when I was reading it, how those those rich people they had surplus, they had money that it was it meant nothing to them, yeah, you know. Yeah. And for that lady to give everything that she had with an open heart, that that, that really means a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I don't know, I just felt like that that really means a lot. The uh, the the story also about the uh, the woman with the issue of blood, right? H how long was she afflicted for? for 12 years right mm -hmm. a very long time she suffered right and it shows what that even though she was suffering she knew that the that the that the one who can heal her and the one who can save her uh was walking by Amen. And, Amen. and she pushed Amen. through through the crowd and, and and touched the hem yes. of his garment yes. knowing that she had to push forward yes and and as as christians uh sometimes uh we we, we tend to get, you know, uh, reprimanded by our pastors or we get uh, reprimanded by our job. And, and next thing you know, our whole life just, you know, goes down the drain. And yes. we get upset and we go home and we, we throw a, a little ten temper tantrum. But, but we have to push forward. Amen. Even when it comes to the, to, the, to the ministry and the gospel of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. we, we have to march forward like a soldier who marches forward. And that, young, that lady uh, with, the, with the issue of blood, she just pushed forward. Amen. She pushed through the crowd. Amen. Even with her afflictions and her problems and her issues in her life, uh, she still pushed forward to just touch the hem of his garment. Uh, and amen. just by doing that, she, she was healed. The Lord knew that he let go of some power. And so that's what grace does. It gives us 
a power. Hallelujah. The power Hallelujah. of the abundance of joy yes. to overcome the yes. afflictions that are going on in our lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So I can read uh, verse 3. Verse 3 uh, in uh, NLT version. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more. And they did it of their own free will. <laughs> this is some uh, powerful statement. Now, Paul says that he testified. So when, uh, when the apostle says he testified, that means it's something that it's not only people telling him, but I'm assuming that's something that he witnessed. In my Bible, uh, my verse says here, I, for I bear witness that, oh, uh, that according yes. to their ability. Yes. yes. See, he, he was a witness <laughs> wow. to their grace, to their abundance of joy. <laughs> you, you know, uh, even uh, when we go through uh, trials or issues in, in our churches, we should, you know, know that we are going through a trial. We know that we're going through some a season. But that doesn't mean that we stop giving. Amen. As, a, as Amen. a church, we still have missionaries out there. Hallelujah. We still have ministries in our churches, mm -hmm. like youth programs mm -hmm. and men's Bible mm -hmm. studies and women Bible studies, mm -hmm. uh, street mm -hmm. ministries. We mm -hmm. all know that we have these ministries in our churches, and we should still give. No, yes. matter, no matter what we're going through in church, no matter what our finances read on the books, we know that, 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 that we have to go to the source. Yes. The source of our giving is not in our pockets. The source is God. Amen. God provides. Amen. You want to read uh, verse 3 in the Haitian Creole? Amen. Sam Abdinou la, c'est vrai, oui. Yo bay sa yo te kapab. Yo mem bay passe sa yo te kapab. Sam moun pat force yo. Amen. So, it says that they give, they give not only what, uh, what they, they were supposed to give mm -hmm. or what they, can, like what they could afford, mm -hmm. but it says that they give far more. So what, what Pastor Omar, if I only got $10, so, it was, so if, I know you're going to talk about service later on. So from this perspective, it seems like we're talking about money, right? We, we're talking about money. So, so if, if I only have $10, man. And I give ten dollars, but now Paul say that they give far more. What does what is Paul talking about? Uh, it could be far more, not just maybe monetary, but it also in your time. In in your time, you know, just uh, it could be material things. You know, someone has a need; they they need um, clothes, mm -hmm. they need food. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my 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 wife uh, introduced me to a young lady who lives in a hotel with with three children uh and she introduced me to her we took her shopping and we paid for her food you know we knew that she doesn't make a living she doesn't she doesn't have a job but she we able to help her and Amen. that's by us giving to her Amen. uh my my wife who at one time was was looking for a deposit for her house when she was uh uh, uh, uh with her children uh she needed money uh, what she did was she gave her last three dollars that she had to the offering plate in our church and God opened a, a door that someone was able to help her which was her father to help her with the deposit for the house which was exactly the amount of money that she needed but she never let her father know what she needed only God knew and God put it in her father's heart to give that exact amount you see? Amen. Amen. And then on the second portion of the, that verse, it says that they give, uh, they give it of their own free will. Yes. Yes. So, and, <laughs> because you know God gives us free will to make decisions about anything. Yes, right. We could we could choose to serve Him or not, but they they gave freely and willingly. But if I got ten dollars, like you know, now from the from the money's perspective, like we you know we got a lot of. Uh, prosperity preachers out there mm -hmm. and his prosperity prosperity preacher told me that uh, to give 100 dollars and in in return i will i will have thousand dollars now mm -hmm. that that verse three already throw that away because mm -hmm. that's not 
my free will because somebody forced me to give. Right. Somebody's in encouraging you or enticing you. Encouraging you. you. Yeah, yeah. They you give see, you a little push, right? Right, right. I don't, I don't need a push, you know. <laughs> you, you know, I, I know where my, where my uh, money goes and I know where it comes from. You know, uh, I, I work. Uh, God has given me a, a job. And, and I know that when, it's the, when there's a calling and there's a need, I give. But now, there's another question that come up in my, in my heart. How do we encourage people in the church to give, like uh, give their offering, like their tithes? So if we understand that in verse 3, the, the apostle Paul is really talking about these people. He's encouraging us to, as an example, to, to look at the church in Macedonia that give with, with their own free will. So and and that's the word you just said. He, he told us to look at Macedonia. They are the example. We have to be the example to the members of our church. If you want okay. the members in your church to give 10% uh, of their tithe, then you have to show them that you do it also. And what, do you, what benefits do you get from it? Amen. What, Amen. what comes back into your returns? Yes. You see, mm -hmm. uh, 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 and uh, at uh, Pastor Joe's church up in the northeast in Colonia, he had a a, a young a, a young man in his church who gave his his portion of his tithe and received more. And a Hallelujah. week later, Hallelujah. his 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 check mm -hmm. that he got increased. Hallelujah. Okay, it wasn't yes. a lot, but there was an increase that yes. he did not know. But it, that's how God works. God works mm -hmm. in, in a mysterious ways, yes. in ways that we will yes. never understand. Yes. But when we get blessed but because of our giving, we don't, we don't see it sometimes in, in, in with our eyes. Mm -hmm. We see it uh, with our health. We see things uh, when things are running perfectly well in our church. You know, the lights don't go out. The, the, our cars don't break down. You see, I see things that, you know, these are material things, but they last. Amen. They, they are they are things that we can look at and they're tangible, but they are ours. They belong to us, but we also know that everything that we own belongs to God. Amen. 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 So verse four, you, you want to read? Oh no, yes. because you finished talking. Let me let okay. me let me read it. Verse four, uh, they begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift that for, I mean for the believers in Jerusalem. C'est So now uh, my understanding is that Paul reaffirming what he said about the, the free will of the people, you know, they exercise that free will by begging, begging, by, 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 by volunteering them, their service or their money to, uh, to the people in Jerusalem. They're, they're begging Paul to, to let them keep, continue to give, you see? And, and they made it like, this is, this is our joy. This is what we love to do, you know? It's, it's something that you have to love to do. You know, it's like you have to hate sin. You have to hate sin in order yes. for sin to flee. Yes. In order for you mm -hmm. to get rid of the enemy and the things that he's doing in your life, yes. you have to hate the enemy and, 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 and rebuke him and his wicked ways. You see? Amen. And it's the same here. The Macedonians were imploring him, you know, with urgency that they would receive the gifts and the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. That it's, it is a gift to them uh, spiritually. It is a spiritual gift to them, which means that what do they get? Spiritual growth, yes. more understanding of mm -hmm. giving, mm -hmm. the grace of God mm -hmm. that, that abides yes. on that, them, yes. and they're yes. not just only them as an individual, yes. but as a whole church. Yes. You see? Abundant mm -hmm. joy. Yes, the abundant joy. Yes. Uh, Brother Junior, you have anything to say in verse 4? Uh, yeah, um, I would like to add that. It's like supernatural increase, you know. Uh, we, we might not understand what that is, but once you start participating and giving your, your, your tithes and offerings willingly, you're, that's when you were going to be like these people from Macedonia where, where they begged again and again for the privilege of sharing the gifts. And uh, like as we're talking about this, I, I, I kind of like com 
uh, forgot about it. I put it in the back of me. But in 2013, um, I was living in Austin, Texas, and I moved to El Paso. And, uh, you know, $2,000 at the time, I thought that was a lot of money. But trying to pay for gas and, mm-hmm. and for an apartment and for food and everything, mm-hmm. that $2,000 goes by really fast. Right. And I was trying to look for work, and I couldn't look for work. So mm-hmm. I went to a homeless shelter, and I remember that I gave the guy my ID, and I signed the paperwork, and he handed, handed it back to me, and he says, happy birthday, by the way. And I was like, don't remind me. <laughs> so um, I didn't have anything at that time. And um, I remember I, I got introduced to a guy. His name is George Blancas. He's a, he's a very uh, good guy here in El Paso. And uh, he started taking me to church. And the first thing that after the praise and worship that they started talking about was tithes and offering. And plus my heart was like blocked. I was like, nah, because this place makes a lot of money. You know what I mean? They don't need my tithes and offerings. And uh, when I heard the pastor talking about supernatural increase when you give, I didn't believe it. So I didn't give my offering that time, but I wish I did give it, you know what I mean? So um, going fast forward, I, I was giving back with my time. I was uh, working with teenagers and stuff in the church and helping them like play chess and play piano and everything. And uh, so that's the way I was giving because I didn't have a job. But when I did get my first job, I remember that I made a commitment to say, hey, do you know what? I'm going to give my 10% from whatever I made. And uh, I gave my 10%. And then, like, after two months of working as a substitute custodian, um, the supervisor found favor in me. And he goes, hey, put your application in um, to get an assistant head custodian position. And I said, okay, I'm not going to get it because it says I need two years as an employee. And all I have is two months as a substitute. And then he goes, just do it, just do it. So I was like, all right, cool. So I, I put my application in. And I went to the interview. And they asked me questions. I didn't know how to answer them, so I blew it. The interview was really bad, but I walked away, and I was like, yeah, I'm probably get it next time. But they called me still. They're like, hey, are you interested in the job? And I was like, what? Is this the supernatural increase? <laughs> you know what I mean? Did they find a favor in me when I was there? So I got very excited, and for them, I started, I continued to give my tithes. I continued to give my offerings. And after a year later, the supervisor comes back to me again. He goes, hey, do you know what? We want you to apply for the manager position. And I was like, oh, well, you know what I mean? I have to have two years as an employee, and I have to have two years as, as an assistant to get that position. Just put it in. So I put my application in, and to my surprise, I got, I got it. You know what I mean? So that, that made me very happy to be in a place where I didn't have nothing. I didn't have a phone. I didn't have a car. I didn't have anything. To fast forward, feeling like I was planting my seed by giving my money, giving my time to the church, and I saw a supernatural increase and a change inside my life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor Omar, so, uh, so we always know because on my version of verse 4, I don't know if yours says something like that, the gift for the believers in Jerusalem. So the, 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 the word Jerusalem, that's what uh, uh, catch my attention. You know, they always say Paul is uh, the, a minister to, uh, to the Gentiles. And now... What I see is that his heart is for the people of Jerusalem, the Jews. So, so what lesson that we can, we can get from that? That Paul, you know, spent time, you know, uh, I would say fundraising, you know, collecting money to go help those people in Jerusalem. And even though his ministry per se was for the, for, for, for the Gentiles. Yeah, it just shows that you still have a responsibility to help out other churches who are in need. Amen. When, when Amen. they come knocking at your door, mm-hmm. we shouldn't just, you know, turn the church away. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should always be able to reach out to those churches who come to knock on our door. Even, if, even as a small church like Walk by Faith, yes. you know, a, a church comes knocking at your door, you know, hey, uh, do you have this? Do you, we, you know, help them out it, it shows that even though we may not have uh, a lot here and walk by faith yes. but we be able to still help out those you know it might not be much it may not be uh, a lot of money but something is better than than turning them away uh and you know down here in my uh concordance uh, uh here it talks about the desire to share in financially ministering with the other with with the other contributing churches to the saints in jerusalem that means that they had a desire to help to continue to help other churches in the ministry in the ministry and to contribute to them and to the saints in jerusalem everyone we should be helping everyone and it's kind of sad sometimes when when you 
see uh, churches um, that don't help other churches, especially new churches, churches that are starting and, and, uh, and, uh, and are getting on their feet. You know, you, we all have to know that, I mean, I don't, I don't per se have a, uh, a church. You know, I, I'm under a, a pastor, a senior pastor that, that has a church. But, you know, I know that there's churches out there who are struggling to get on their feet, and, and that's hard. And for someone who has started a church and has, is a church that's been going on for a little bit, they, you should know the struggles of what it's like to be a pastor trying to preach to a flock with the minimum, you see? And, and it is only by grace that sometimes we don't know how to pay the bills, but somehow money still gets to come in through the door, Amen. you know? Amen. 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 So uh, for the uh, viewers watching us over the internet, uh, via social media, we had many platforms. We got YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, Periscope. We got uh, you stream, uh, live stream. We so many platforms. I know uh, we cannot monitor all those platforms at this time. And we're gonna, I'm going to review you the questions that you may have. And then eventually, Pastor Omar, Pastor uh, Junior, and I will be able to, uh, to uh, uh, go back and, and help you with uh, the way that we understand uh, the, the, the chapter. So we're in Second Corinthians 8, chapter 8. And uh, now we're in verse 5. I'm going to read verse 5, Pastor Omar. Uh, they even did more than we had hoped. For their first actions was to give themselves to the Lord and to us, just as God wanted them to do. Yes, um, you know, that's, that to me is, um, you always give to God first, hmm. right? You know, uh, and Micah talks about, you know, uh, giving of your tenth and don't rob God because mm. God knows what belongs Alleluia. to him. Alleluia. Right? Mm -hmm. So what, anything that's after that, mm -hmm. anything that you give after mm -hmm. that. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like icing on the cake. Amen. It's like, it's like Amen. icing on the cake. Yes. Give always to God first, and mm -hmm. then you give to, to the rest uh, who are in need. Hallelujah. So, uh, so you, see the, you see the generosity in them. You see the selfless, if we can uh, call it like that, selfless giving, selfless yes. service. You know, you know, the apostle said that get, they give more than we even think that we'll, they will be given. They right. even give more than we even thought yes. or, or hope. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that give a lot of... Uh, it's an example for us that they have given us. Hmm. The, 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 the Church of Macedonia has given us an example to follow. And, and, and that, that example is giving. Amen. Just be Amen. cheerful in your giving. Amen. Go beyond, above and beyond what you're supposed to give. You give to your church first, and then give to those who are in need. You know, it, it talks about giving, uh, taking care of the orphans and the widows uh, mm -hmm. and children. You know, these are people who are all in need. You know, when we go out to the streets and we do uh, ministry, we go out there to the people who are in need, who are ho who are who feel hopeless because they are out there on the streets. You know, uh, in, in my church, we go out to to uh, the, my pastor's wife, uh, First Lady Judy Russell. She goes out and ministers to the to the women of the street uh, at night on Fridays, and uh, she goes out there to to encourage them, to give them the word, oh, to to give them hope. To, to let them know that there is a way out of their conditions yes. and out of their afflictions, Agreed. out of their issues by the, by the mercy and grace of God. Amen. 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 Sa dépasse, sa nous te quoi. En pile, yo offri tete yo, by Seigneur, avant, après, vlil. Amen. Amen. So, verse 6. So, we have urged Titus who encourage your giving in the first place to return to you and encourage you to finish this ministry of giving. <laughs> so what I see here is that so you always have to encourage givers, I mean people who give, right? You always have to encourage whoever participate in your ministries you always have to encourage whoever uh carry this 
ministry or your ministry, if you are in a setting, in a setting that you were talking about, uh, women go downtown and then uh, wor uh, worship and then encourage the women in the streets to leave the, that condition. So that's a service of giving too. And then we, we uh, verse six is like exhorting us that we have to encourage those people that work in or those people that give it. Yes, and, and we have to, um, to uh, because uh, Titus was, uh, was uh, to, to resume the supervision, to, to supervise uh, the, ish, the collections, mm. you see? And, and what happens is that we have to just not just encourage, but also make sure that when we encourage people that give, make sure that they know where the giving is going to. Make sure that they know that it's going Hallelujah. through those ministries. Hallelujah. And how do we know that? We know that by the fruits of those Hallelujah. ministries Hallelujah. you see we see the fruits of of the ministries of, of what's going on outside the church if we're just a church that stays closed in our wall i mean in our, within our walls of our church and we don't go outside of the church and minister how can then we say we're doing something out in the street when we're not we're staying indoors we need to be if we're going to say we're going to have a street ministry then let's have a street ministry and let's show the fruits of those ministries Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Junior, got anything? Uh, yes. You know, uh, something that comes to my mind, and <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's, a, a, there's, there's mega churches out there. There's really big churches out there. And uh, a lot of them, a lot of those people, they're considered prosperity preachers. Uh, but there's, there's some of them that they do have big churches, but I see them that they're, they are they are encouraging the people to give they're teaching the people how to give to the church and i think when it comes to giving they they do it almost every service mm -hmm. and that's why the resources are are in the house you know what i mean the the resources are coming in and there's little churches that that are upset at these really big churches and they don't teach the people how to give they say oh no we, we don't teach the congregation how to give we don't talk money here or we don't want to teach the children or the teenagers how to give uh, be, because they're still young, but I, I don't see it like that. I see like if they're children and teenagers, we got to teach them at, at a young age because the Bible does say train a child in the way it should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And uh, so some of these uh, mega churches that are out there, um, I see them doing r good. I see them going out. I see them feeding the people. I see them ministering on the streets, and and I see them making a difference in the city. So what what are your thoughts about those mega churches that are out there like are they are they considered bad people because they're they're doing god's will or are are they good people because they're doing god's will no they're, they're doing god's will you know they just happen to be it just that just happened to be their ministry and they 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 have uh, attained uh, that position and they have attained that large uh f amount of followers and 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 so Yes, uh, when you have a large church, a, a mega church, then yes, you know, you, they, they, it should show even more the fruits of their labor when they're going out there to the streets and giving to the homeless or uh, giving away f uh, clothing and food or, and ministries, you see. And, but just because we're a small church, we might not be able to do something like a, a mega church, but we can still do something to still have an impact in our community. You know, if it's just going out and just uh, getting a box of Bibles uh, and, and passing them out and praying for people on the street, that is still working for the kingdom. It doesn't matter how big your church is. It doesn't matter how small your church is because you still give. The, the woman with the might gave small, but she gave the most because she gave all she had. You see, she gave all she had. Soon. Amen. So the like what like <clears throat> what I'm seeing is like the fruits of the spirit. Like we have to just it doesn't matter if they're a small church or if they're a big church. We have to just look at the fruits of the spirit. We have to judge them based on that. Uh, we and we have as Christians we have to do that righteous judgment. You know mm -hmm. we have to say okay yeah they're a big church but hey you know what I mean they are doing God's will. You know what I mean. Yes. So yeah. are we gonna support them if they're doing God's will or are we gonna speak bad about them if they're doing God's will no. because we're not at their level. Yeah, no. You should, never, you should never speak bad about another Amen. pastor Amen. Or, and, and their church and their ministry or even a minister or a chaplain. You should always uh, speak words of encouragement, words of praise, 
uh, and, and, and lift those people up. Even the small churches, you see, because we, they, they're doing things at a, at a bigger level than, 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 than some of the smaller churches, you see, because they have the, the amount of people. And they, when you start getting the amount of people coming in and giving, yeah, you got to do more. You got to do more. So, Brother Junior, there are two aspects of, uh, of, your, of your question. So, the, there's, there's the aspect of the, the mega churches teaching that, teaching what the Bible says about giving, which in verse 6, we're talking about encouragement. That's something that churches ought to do, preaching. It's, if we're going to preach the word of God, we preach the word of God uh, un unfiltered. We, you know, now we're in this chapter 8 and chapter 9 talking about giving, yes, we're teaching we 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 preaching about those. So so of course they they don't do anything wrong against against that. But now a, a pastor may uh, not not talking bad about them, but in the same setting of teaching the members, uh, let clarify that you know you know in Matthew twenty four uh, Jesus talk about. The, those false prophets that's gonna be coming. So if we if we talk about false prophet and then those prosperity preachers, it's not bad. What I'm saying is that if we know that they tell you if you give one thousand dollars, you're gonna receive ten thousand dollars. There is nowhere in the Bible that it says it like that. You know, we we know about uh, the blessing. We know about all that. But the blessing may come in in a different. Uh, in a different setting, but uh, you know those prosperity preachers, they will literally tell you if you give tonight, your mother probably gonna be healed. If you give tonight, you know the curse that you got in your life. Gonna... No, we have to point that out to uh, to fellow uh, uh, Christians, believers. That that's not what the Bible teaches. You know, yeah, so that's that's the difference. Yeah, I get you. Mm -hmm. So like, so we just have to judge them we have to judge by their fruits so we have to judge by the fruits for the ones that the big churches that are doing good things and the other people that are forcing people to give right, <laughs> like right. let me see your taxes right. or something now, every every <laughs> every person has their reward yeah, yeah. you know every, yeah. everyone has their reward and and whether you're a, a mega church or a prosperity preacher or mm -hmm. the small storefront preacher like we have here Amen. uh you know, we, we all going to be in heaven standing before the throne. Yeah. We, we can't take it all with us, you yeah. know. And so what we got is what we got. And what we get into the door is what we get. And what we get is what we give. Yeah. You know? So if you're watching on Facebook, if you have any questions about Second Corinthians 8, you can send those questions. So if you're watching from any other uh, platform like uh, YouTube, uh, Periscope, uh, Ustream, Livestream, all those platforms, we're not monitoring it right now, but you can still send those questions and then uh, in different way that we will, we will respond to those questions. So we're on verse 6. Now we're on verse 7, Pastor Mahara. Uh, I think the first lady needs to read verse uh, 6. 6, amen. We? We. <laughs> amen. C'est comme ça, moi, ma de tit pour la la caille pour ka continuer travail li te commencé ya pour nous ka bay sa nou gen pou n bay la a tout ke nou amen so let's read the verse 7 since you excel in so many ways in your faith your gift speak your gifted speakers your knowledge your enthusiasm and your love from us I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I struggle in the word of speech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I struggle with speech. <laughs> yes. But, but, you know, God, God loves me and, and I, I have grace Hallelujah. in that area. Yes, uh, but sir. yes, you know, we abound in everything. Mm -hmm. In faith, in speech, in knowledge, yes. and in all diligence, mm -hmm. and in your love for us, yes. uh, so that you... Uh, abound in this grace also and this is what the grace was uh, was abounding in not just joy because they were joyful people and joyful giving but in their faith 
Mm -hmm. they, had, they had faith because they knew that when they give, they would receive back. They will receive right, right. more in return, uh, pressed right. down, shaken together, and overflowing. Right. Right. Overflowing. Right. See? And so, uh, and in knowledge, uh, and in the diligence, uh, they, they knew, they started to understand and comprehend the, the, uh, the mystery of giving. Uh, right, Pastor Junior, or what you said about the, uh, what is that, the unseen things that that happen in our lives the yes. supernatural increase supernatural, the supernatural yeah. increase is what you, that's what pastor Amen. junior said Amen. and and these are the things that we start to 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 take in and this knowledge because we start seeing hey there's things in my life that that are happening that i wasn't sure just like uh, pastor junior was talking about doors of opportunity started opening for him when he started giving when he started giving he fell on application thinking he wasn't qualified and he was hired. He, they gave him another opportunity to do another application for another position in the same job. He thought he wasn't qualified, but they gave him the job. It's because God has favor on us. Mm -hmm. And with that knowledge, with that knowledge that we know that God is always on our side, you know, we should always be able to give, not just first to God, we, to give first to God, and not only that, but then also give above, happily, cheerfully, uh, and giving in above and beyond. Amen, amen. You have anything to say about the uh, verse... Uh Seven, Brother Junior? Uh, yes, right there where it says, I want you to excel also in the gracious act of giving. Yes. Um, you know, I, I've seen a, a, lot of my, a lot of people that I know, you know, that, that go to church or they, they went to church and they stopped going because of the tithes and the offering. You know, they give their money and what, what happens is that the, the church, the pastors or whatever, they go out and they use the credit card of the church. And then that, that employee is working there and they're like, hey, well, my money is going to their food. Like, am I giving them my, my tithes and offering so they could be, be using it to go out to eat? Mm -hmm. But, you know, what, what I tell them, tell them is, hey, you know what? Don't, you're, you're doing your part as a Christian. Yeah. You're Amen. the one planting your seed. Amen. Don't worry about what they're going to do with yes. the money. You, yes. you're, you already did your part as a Christian. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have to see it like a seed that it gets watered. And if you keep mm -hmm. watering something, it's going to come out of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So whatever they do with it i don't i don't i don't feel like they should really really care you know what i mean yes verse 7 talking about uh, in your faith so you uh you have to live by faith you walk by faith you know whatever you do you shouldn't be judging uh especially if, if in your giving you shouldn't be judging of uh, of what in return what what does your giving do because you live by faith you know that you know with, with your heart with your generous giving you you know you give it for for the service of the lord if uh, anybody use it for anything else that's on them like pastor omar was saying every everybody got their account you you are accountable uh, to god so that's on them you know it's the same it's the same way uh we were talking about those prosperity preachers uh, I should realize that it's on them. They should, if whatever they do with, uh, with what they're asking the people to do, if so, they, they, will, they will respond to God on that, you know. Uh, so the faith, the, the key word in, in this verse, verse 7, is faith. And then you see all the other stuff that they receive. So now, Pastor Omar, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm not beating those prosperity preachers, but they use this verse to... Uh, in a way to, to kind of explain the quid pro quo. You know how it says that uh, in your faith, you got knowledge, you got uh, great speakers in your church, you, you, you have people that, uh, that got the fire to do stuff, you know, and then he, I want you to excel also in your graceful giving, you know. So do you see a quid pro quo in, in that if you give this, you're going to receive that in there? Yes, that, that's, that's the way it is most of the times. But we also got to remember that, that God is also, he is a giver. God Amen. doesn't hold back. Amen. So we need to know that, uh, that yes, when we do give, you know, we, we, don't, uh, we shouldn't give with an expectation that we're going to get back. We should give knowing that we're just giving. Amen. And Amen. that when something comes back, God says Amen. it'll come back to you, Amen. you know. But always don't rob God. Amen. Just give, Amen. Uh, and it'll, it'll always come back to us. Amen. In in, uh, in in having that faith in that, we I don't we don't have to worry where yes. where when we start going through trials and tribulations, or when we lose a job or something like that. You know, uh, going uh, to what uh, Pastor Junior was talking about about uh, these pastors who 
you know, there's pastors that don't have another job. This is their only job is to feed the flock. Their only job is to run and maintain a church. To, to run and maintain a church, it takes finances. And it takes good members to help run a church. Uh, and so when you have Christians that are leaving because they're talking about a church that all they want is money and this and that, you know what? The, nothing is free in a church. The, the, the lights are, are the same kind of electricity that you use in your own house. And those bills that you pay, the church has to pay also. There's gas, lights, water, and, and also the, the person who is in charge of the church has to have a place to, to rest his head. To rest his head. Amen. Amen. But I believe that, that you know, you got to have that faith. And, and God, God will provide. He provides. No matter if you're a prosperity speaker or not, you know, God takes care of everyone in their own way. And, and there has been people who have progressed forward in their faith through the prosperity preaching. And there's those who have just given their tithe and there's those who just given their offering because that's all they had and god doesn't look at the outward appearance of man and what he does he looks at his heart and mm -hmm. whatever's inside your heart is what you should be giving from your heart not from well you know uh, you know let me do the math here and I, I gotta do this here before i do that and i gotta pay this bill and you know you just give from your heart you know, like, like my wife did. She gave from her heart. She only had $3. She didn't grudgingly give it. She just, you know what, Lord, I trust you. Here's my only $3. I have no money in the bank account. I have no money in my pocket. This is what I have to give for you. And I would mm -hmm. like to add to that. You know, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, it says, contribute to the support of your teacher. So I believe that anybody that is on stage doing it with the open heart and, and willingly and, and trying to make a difference inside of their city that we should contribute by giving our tithes and our offerings Amen. and they get a percentage out of it so um let's go to oh i'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we know this to do when kids in uh la foi connaissance verite kids in uh activity no Pour moi, c'est peut-être ça, moi, ta remé, ouais, nous baille à tout que nous, pour œuvre ça, tant qu'au monde qui riche. Amen. So, verse 8. I'm not commanding you to do this, but I am testing how genuine your love is by comparing it with uh, the eagerness of other churches. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and I was reading here that if, if you go to um, uh, Hallelujah. chapter 9, again, mm -hmm. uh, cha chapter 9 between verses 5 and 7, yeah. it's the same thing. It explains a little more. Mm -hmm. It says, therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gifts mm -hmm. beforehand, mm -hmm. which you have previously promised, yes. that it may be ready as a matter of generosity mm. and not as a grudgingly obligation. Yes. You see? Grudgingly obligation. Yes. Generosity. It's about being generous, you know, giving beyond and above, not as a grudgingly obligation. But this I say in verse 6 of chapter 9, he who sows sparingly will mm -hmm. also reap sparingly. Yes. And he who sows abundantly will also mm -hmm. reap abundantly. Amen. And so when you give, mm -hmm. you know, when we give, we, are, we should be expected yes. to receive. Yes. You see? We, and, and it's right there in English. We are expected to receive. Yes. So, um, so, uh, First Lady, can you read it in, in Creole? Amen. C'est pas pour your Lord. Lord, ma banou, mais moi prends exemple sous l'autre yo pour nous même tout nous ca montrer Jean nous gain remain tout bon dans que nous. Okay, so you you wanted her to read the uh, verse eight of uh, Second Corinthians. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I thought that's what yeah, that's what she read. That's what she read. Verse nine. Okay. Chapter nine. On the chapter nine. On chapter nine. Yeah. Chapter nine. Chapter 9? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Chapter 9 and then verse... Uh, which verse do you want to... 5 through 6. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. 5. Okay. C'est ça qui fait moins quoi. Amen. C'était nécessaire pour me demander, frère Sayo, pour y aller la caille avant moi, pour nous parler cadeau nous te promet nous tap bay la comme ça les m'arriver 
moi même cadeau va tout parer les ça mon yo va ouais nous bail parce que nous voulez pas parce que yo forcer nous verset 6 songez ça moi songez ça bien mon qui s'y met ti grâce va récolter ti grâce mon qui s'y met en pile va récolter en pile amen 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 so, so you see like so if you if you sow sparingly yeah. then you reap sparingly yes you know so so we should give so when you were talking about prosperity givers you know that is their ministry that is their calling hmm. So we shouldn't judge them because mm -hmm. we all have to stand before the Father, yes. you know. Yes. And, and for myself, I, I wouldn't do that to my church if, if I had a church. Yes. To me, is you know, it is out of your heart that you give. And if you know if we have a mission here in our church, then you should be able to support that mission. Yes. You see, so we have here in, in Walk by Faith Church, this is Walk by Faith. We're here to support the Haitian ministry, to the, to the Haitian community. Then that's who we need to be supporting. And the Haitian community should be supporting the church. Amen. You see? And then those who come and visit who are not Haitians, like, like myself, who I believe I'm a family member of this church, that I, I'm able to come to receive the word, to still be blessed, to still be fed. But I'm not going to leave here without also giving. Because I also give here to assist in the church that also asks me to come and participate in their ministry. Amen. Amen. So now in, at the beginning of uh, verse 8 in my version, it says that I'm not commending you. Like I'm not, I'm not pressing you to do this. I'm not, uh, it, it seems like he's, uh, you know, people always judge in, in, that, in, that, in that setting to... Uh, to say that uh, you want them to do stuff. You know, but Paul, he said, hey, don't think that I'm commending you. It's not like I'm giving you orders to do this. It but has I, to be done <laughs> voluntarily. Voluntarily. Yes, and that's out of your heart. And then the second part, he says he's testing how genuine their love is. Yes. Mm -hmm. because, because if you really love your church, then you would give generously. And it, is not a, it shouldn't be, you know, a commandment. Or a threat it should be out of your heart because God already knows what you're gonna give and, and Jesus uh, in Luke uh, the, the the situation about uh, the the big ta uh, tax collectors the big people that got good big money you know they, uh, they, they when they gave you know they they do it in a way that everybody's seen that they're giving and then you know uh, Jesus point them out, and uh, and then uh, the, the the lady or the woman that has nothing, you know, she the little that she gave, she gave it with so genuinely with a, with a, with an act of love. People didn't even notice that on, on his right, Jesus. right. And she gave it. She gave all. Amen. And see, and and those are the the hypocrites who want to stand in the corner and show people, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. This is me. This is what I'm doing, yes, yes, you know, and, yes. and that's uh, ministry uh, yes. shouldn't be that way. Amen. You know, we Amen. should be a, a church Amen. that does Hallelujah. things and just go out and do Hallelujah. it. We don't have to go and broadcast. Hey, you know, like like uh, for myself, you know, I, I go down to the rescue missions on, on Tuesday night at 630 to 730. And um, I don't I don't. Uh, broadcast it or boast about it. Um, people in my church know that I go. I go there because that's where I'm called to go. I, I, I don't get paid. Uh, it's my time that I give to preach the gospel to those who need it, yes. to those who are who are in need of hope, who are in need of Jesus Christ yes. as a savior. And, and you know, uh, that's giving, yes. giving of your time. Yes. Uh, and there's no boasting about it. Amen. You know, I, I give a report to my pastor that I still go there. Uh, you know, the numbers are good, you know, four or five people. You know, and we're still doing a ministry there. Uh, and uh, and uh, I'm part of my church, and uh, my pastor supports me and, and what I do there. Uh, and uh, and that's it. Amen. Amen. Anything about verse 8? Yeah, where it says, uh, I'm not commanding you to do this. Yes. Right there. Like, well, the way I see it is, like, if you're commanding somebody to do something, it's like you're forcing them to, like, give a text or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I like how the next sentence says, your love. You know what I mean? How we do it with our love we do it willingly we do yeah, it and, generously and, yeah and, and he's doing it uh he does it he says it this way because he doesn't want you to be commanded so it's testing you to see do you really trust god as your source 
You see? As your source. Do you trust God as your source? You know? That's why when you give, give cheerfully. When you give, give gener generously. Amen. You know? But first give to God. Amen. And then everything else beyond that is, is your voluntarily generosity and give it joyfully and cheerfully. Amen. So Amen. for those of you watching uh, over e either platform, so we in... Uh, uh, chapter 9, chapter 8 of uh, Second Corinthians. And I know uh, we're supposed to go over uh, the entire chapter, but we're going to, I guess we're going to finish on uh, verse 9, Pastor Omar. And then, uh, and then you, I, I encourage every single one of you to uh, continue to read uh, the, the chapter because uh, it's a chapter of comparing, but it's uh, comparing uh, the service, uh, the offering of uh, the church in Macedonia, uh, uh, the letter that uh, the Apostle Paul sent to the uh, people in Corinth, he says, if, you, if, you're, if you're brothers and sisters in, uh, in the north, talking about the Macedonians, they're doing this, I encourage you to do, to you, you in the south, doing the same thing. And, you know, uh, as uh, that's the comparing and the encouragement of, uh, of, of that. It, it can, it, you can expand that. Uh, from your giving to your service, uh, through your loving, uh, through your praying, uh, blessing one another. You, you know, you can, you can, you can. It's this chapter is about it's about it all. I just uh, we just don't want you to think that we're just talking about money, but it's about a lot of uh, things that uh, the Apostle Paul, God, want want to want to share with us tonight. And uh, now we're on verse nine. Uh, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Amen. No kone ki fave Jesus Christ Seigneur a fait nous. Li même ki te rich, li te li te fait tête li tourne pauvre. Pour nous, comme ça. L'elle fait tête li tourne pauvre là, li fait nous riche. Wow, hallelujah. Yeah, it talks about here about that. We're not talking about Jesus being rich <laughs> with monetary uh, <laughs> uh, uh, assignment uh, 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 in his pocket or his purse. We're talking we're not, here we're about. We're only talking about that. No, we're, we're talking <laughs> here about uh, Jesus Christ leaving his throne as yes. Lord and King of, yes, the, of the world yes, and of the sir. heavens and yes, to come sir. down and make himself yes. flesh and become man mm -hmm. and, to, and to suffer as man has suffered you know uh, he didn't just come down here and then walk the earth proclaiming he was king from the get-go you see he just he had to go through things also he he grew up as a child he he was taught the the the, the early five books of the of the patriarch of the old testament and and he had to go to school he had to learn under a rabbi he was baptized and then he went out to the wilderness to be tempted you see, so he left all that of uh, his riches his, is, is all about his kingdom and him being Lord of Lord and kings of kings to step down off his throne and to come to earth and become man. That's where he became poor. Amen. So the verse, uh, verse nine, talking about Jesus, be Jesus was rich. And then he says he became poor so that we can be rich. So I see it in, uh, in, in the redemption. You know, Jesus came, you know, he, he suffering, he suffered for us, you know, he uh, fulfilled the, uh, the calling of God, he fulfilled the, uh, the will of God, fulfilled the purpose of God in his life by dying at the cross for ourselves, for our sins, and then resurrected, get victory over death, now that's how we become rich because now we become co-inheritors of the kingdom hallelujah. of god hallelujah we now fall under the abrahamic yes uh, covenant yes. Co uh, 
covenant covenant of, yes. of Abraham yes. now. Yes, it's yeah. not only now to the Jews. Mm -hmm. It is open for all who believe Hallelujah. in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He was the last and ultimate Hallelujah. sacrifice that was made for all mankind. Hallelujah. Doesn't don't matter who, what part of the world you're from, no matter the color of your skin, what language you speak. If uh, Jesus Christ came for one and for all, right? Because for one sin, one sin alone, it, every wealth, everything that we have, you're talking about monetary, but you know, you can be a billionaire. For one sin, we don't have even, we don't even have money to pay for that. For that, so this says that we become rich, that, you know, our sin, our everything that we've done, you know, washed away as soon as we trust Him, as soon as we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Yes, uh, we, as far as the east is from the west, uh, God remembers our sins no more. And, and that's, the, that's the beauty of, of grace. It doesn't mean that we go out there and sin. Is what we have is grace. God forgives us of our great of our sins. He is our Father, just like you as a father, uh, and you have children. We have to learn to forgive our children, no matter what their mistakes are, no matter how small they are or how big. We have to have the same heart that God has. Hallelujah. You see, because if He indwells in us, then we have He is our example, and we have yes. to remember that you know what He is a forgiving Father. We also have to be forgiving Father. Hallelujah, Pastor Junior. No, that, that, that was really good. I don't have nothing yes. to say. Other than <laughs> I've heard many different interpretations about verse nine. Yes, and the, the way you said it, it yes. blew my mind, man. I, I'm looking forward to this session finishing so i can relook at what you, yeah, what it's, you it's, said you know what it's not about rich monetary you know i i'm rich i have my health Hallelujah. i'm rich Hallelujah. i have uh, god bless me with a yes. uh, my companion Hallelujah. who who helps me in good times mm -hmm. and in bad times mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. when i'm doing something wrong she helps correct Hallelujah. Me, you know Hallelujah. i have a father in heaven who Hallelujah. loves me i'm at peace with my family Hallelujah. uh you know uh, i i'm forgiven by my family Hallelujah. i forgive my family um I, I don't walk around with my head down in the dumps. I try, I try to keep my head up and Hallelujah. walk in victory. You know? and, and these are the things that we have to yes. remember of the riches of what it is to walk in, in faith. Yes. You see? Hallelujah. To, like, you're, like here, walk by faith. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of meaning, Hallelujah. walk by faith. Hallelujah. Walk by faith doesn't just mean uh, you know, uh, the, the eyes have not seen. Mm -hmm. you know? it's, it's, it's the unseen yes. and the unseen blessings that we have just Hallelujah. because we believe. Hallelujah. In a in a in a God who 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 loved us so much yes. that He gave His Son to die for us on a cross, yes. you know, and so we become rich. You know, uh, the 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 thief on the cross that was next to Jesus, you know, he didn't uh, do a whole bunch of works to become saved to go to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he had a a mind uh, change. Amen. He had to have an acknowledgement of someone that was next to him that he did not know before. You see, and while the other thief on the cross was mocking him, this one thief had a change of heart first, and then his mind accepted the fact that this man next to me in the center is the Lord of Lord and Kings of Kings. And then he confessed with his mouth saying, hey, Lord, remember me when you go into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said, from this day, you will yes. be with me in paradise Amen. and that's another thing Amen. that's the richness of yes. following christ is we know that we have yes. a destiny and, and the dest uh, excuse me a destination and our destination we're just passing through here on earth and our destination is going to be in paradise Amen. just as that they've had a, you know a moment and here we are we have a what 20 years walking with the Lord or 10 years walking with the Lord or Amen. five, six, seven years walking with the Lord or whatever, you know, your destination is the kingdom. And that's Amen. how we become rich. Amen. Amen. So the, the, the first word you said is that Jesus, money didn't make Jesus rich. You know, uh, it's not money because we rich today is not money. I see the... Uh, in Jesus' setting, it's a different, it's a different thing that he, he was, a, he's a son of God, automatically make him rich. Uh, but for our riches, our rich, richness, for me, is that uh, I feel redeemed. You know, I don't have to live with fear. I don't have to live with uh, any type of uh, 
thinking that Satan can do anything to me. You know, uh, there are people out there that have money, that have houses, that have vehicles, that have billions of dollars somewhere, and then these people kill themselves. You know, so money cannot uh, make them rich, really, you know. Or, so or happy. It doesn't, happy. Yes. Yeah, the money doesn't yes. make them happy. Yes. So that the thing that, uh, you know, they hope that one day we will live forever. That's what makes us rich. And then we can only have that hope through knowing that, like Pastor Moore said, the, the, the thief, he knows that there's somebody on his side that somebody is so powerful that tonight he's going to go to paradise. Amen. So that's, the, that's what makes us rich. Amen. And he became, he was a thief all his life. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. He was a thief and, and didn't know Jesus, wasn't a disciple, wasn't a follower, wasn't like Mary Madeline who got her sins forgiven and followed Christ around. No, he was just some thief who was taken from a prison cell in a dungeon uh, uh, under the Roman Empire and slammed up on a cross just like Jesus. And, and that mindset, that, that change of heart, recognizing who he was being crucified next to, a man who had no sin. You see, he, he knew that. He goes, hey, man, you know, he was telling the other thief, hey, this dude had nothing to do. He's not like us. We deserve this. He doesn't. You see? And so that's, that is important to know that, that you can receive that richness in heaven in an instant. And I know our facility is ready to read in Haitian Creole. The last thing I would like to say about verse 9 is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, and that's a followers of Jesus Christ. We, we, we are to make sacrifice in everything that we do in, in this setting, in this life. You know, Jesus Christ, you know, sacrifice the richness that he has so that we can become rich. Man, he become poor. You know, he didn't, you know, he didn't share like, okay, I'm rich. I stay rich. You're going to become rich. So uh, the Apostle Paul says that Jesus transition from rich to become poor and then and then pass that to us what a, what a blessing you know and that's why the the uh, when he went into the wilderness right and he was tempted by by satan you know satan knew who he was but now that he knew that he was a fleshly person see, mm -hmm. see satan knew now now here he is the lord in the flesh okay now satan was trying to get to his flesh you know, and he says, hey, look, you know what? If you bow down, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. And, and Jesus was like, dude, you're, you're crazy. Are you outside of your mind? You, you know, he goes, I, I, it's already mine. You know, you need to bow down and worship to me because you know what is written. Yes, sir. You see, everything yes. is written. All right. Amen. Everything is written. We, can we just go real quick to, um, uh, to uh, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, uh, five, uh, 5 through 8, I think it is. Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Yeah, Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Yes. I'll wait till First Lady gets there. Yeah, it's not that So far. that way she can. Uh, Philippians. Chapter 2. Chapter 2, it's, it's not verse 4 or 5. From where we were. 5 through 8. You. After Corinth, Ephesians and Philippians. It's why it's in it's in in this. Question. Okay. It's right after Ephesians. Yep. It's not a big book. It's only like five, four pages. That's why we're gonna. Okay, Philippians two, right? Yes, two verses five through eight. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, And so it says here, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Amen. who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with hmm. God, hmm. but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Amen. C'est pour 
c'est pour chercher ça qui bon pour l'autre tout nous yon qui gen pour l'autre même sentiment qui était dans Jésus-Christ là ça bon dieu yea c'est ça le toujours yé mais mm-hmm. il pas de chambre considérer ça tant qu'on avantage pour te pour te pour te chercher qu'un bé à toute force au contraire c'est lui même pour tête pâle qui choisit mettre ça nous qui choisit mettre ça sous côté il plutôt tourné un domestique il mm. prend forme un monde li vinn tankou tout moun li rab rab rabé se tèt li tankou yon moun li soumèt devan bon dieu li obéi bon dieu jout li rivé accepter mouri oui mm. jout li li accepter mouri sou kwa amen amen thank you first lady yes and here it is this this is what he is talking about a bond servant yes he became a slave yes. mm. a slave and mm. coming in the likeness of men yes mm. and and that's what that's why we became rich Amen. because he became a slave Amen. And, and he knew that he Amen. had to do this he, all through his ministry of the three years of him being out with his disciples he knew that there would be a day that he had to go Amen. and he had to prepare his disciples and he had to empower them but the only way he could empower them is by leaving them. Amen. You see? Hallelujah. So when he left, we became empowered and we became rich because of the inheritance of the Abrahamic covenant yes. that we are now in the lineage of the inheritance of the kingdom yes. and we are in the in the power of the Holy Spirit where not one angel in heaven has ever spoken uh, like the holy spirit or have received the holy spirit you see mm-hmm. many people believe but they never receive mm-hmm. amen yes amen, amen. you want to read the verse 9 uh, uh, in haitian creole and then we're going to finish after that amen nous connaît qui faveur jésus christ seigneur a fait nous lui même qui était riche il était fait tête lui tourner pauvre pour nous comme ça l'elle fait tête lui tourner pauvre là Li Amen. Brother Junior, you have anything to say in verse 9? Uh, okay, so Pastor Omar and I, we, we, uh, we, we do all the talking on that. Okay, so uh, anything else that we want to share uh, from verse 1 through verse 9, Pastor Omar? No, I, just to recap on all of that, to, uh, to be in joy when you're giving. Yes. Uh, giving first to God. Mm-hmm and then above and beyond Amen. and when you give give voluntarily no one should have to tell you you should not be having to be felt convicted because someone is telling you you know when you hear the word you should do the word so if god speaks in your heart that you should give to a particular ministry or to a particular missionary or to a particular church and god puts it in your heart remember god sees your heart he doesn't care what your outward appearance is or what your thoughts are because he knows that your heart is where your treasure is you see and that your treasure is what you're planning to keep or let go and when you learn to let go you will receive grace abundantly of joy of your speech of knowledge uh, things that that you will be blessed and and the the blessings will continue to keep flowing not just monetarily but in in the blessings of God and doors of opportunities that will open that no other man can shut only God can open and God will shut the doors of the things that he doesn't want you to walk through amen for those with with those words of wisdom that we're gonna uh, end this uh, service tonight was a praise and worship service Bible study, interactive, interactive Bible study. Uh, you know, it was on uh, Second Corinthians eight. We uh, stopped at uh, verse nine, and I encourage you to finish reading from verse ten all the way through verse twenty-four. It's, uh, this uh, this chapter has a lot of meat, especially uh, if uh, if you're concerned about giving. 
if you're concerned about service, giving of your time, giving of, giving of your money, serving in a church, serving in ministry, etc., etc. And then if you, if, if you want to uh, listen to the sermon, uh, Pastor Omar preached on that last night, I mean, uh, last Sunday with a lot of, a lot of uh, message in there. And, you know, I, uh, I, I, I said kudos to Pastor Omar because not too many preachers uh, focus on, uh, on preaching on, uh, on this uh, sometimes controversial uh, topic, uh, controversial uh, uh, chapter in the Bible. So, you know, the Bible is not controversial now. I'm not saying the Bible is controversial. I'm saying that controversial as the way that we, in our human flesh, want to talk about it. But Pastor Moore did, uh, he did an excellent uh, uh, job, an excellent, excellent uh, preaching. Uh, you can always go back in our, in our feed and then listen to that preaching. So tonight for this uh, service, for this uh, interactive uh, Bible study, it was uh, Pastor Omar, uh, youth pastor from LifeGate Church. Uh, me, senior pastor for Hope by Faith International. Uh, Sister Rachel, she's uh, the ministry, uh, the uh, prison worship uh, minister, uh, leader of uh, the prison worship. And then Pastor Junior, so I start calling him Pastor now because he already get uh, that uh, uh, calling from uh, last week preaching by Pastor Omar. So he's still waiting on the ordination, so it's coming up. Uh, so he's uh, the, mini, uh, the director of uh, music in a church. So uh, in all the platforms that uh, you're watching, so please send uh, any questions any comments, anything that you have that uh, uh, you want to share with us that you, we can uh, 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 respond uh, to your questions. And Pastor Omar, myself, Sister Rachel, Brother Junior, we all will be available to uh, answer those questions. So uh, if uh, Pastor Omar don't have anything, any final notes, anything, uh, I will ask uh, Brother Junior after that to pray for us. No, just uh, thank you for the opportunity to... Uh to preach here at your church. I didn't get to, to see you personally on Sunday. Uh, it is uh, always an honor and a pleasure to, to stand on your pulpit. And uh, I thank you and I honor that. I honor you and your wife, uh, and First Lady Rachel and uh, Pastor Junior. Thank you for, for uh, blessing me here uh, and always inviting me back to your, to, to your home, which is my home. Yes, sir. Uh, Haiti home. Yes. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. The Walk by Faith ministry. And uh, God has a lot of things planned for this church uh, in this year. Continuing. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We just thank you, God, for this um, uh, this Bible study that you have blessed us with, Father God. I just uh, thank thank you for having uh, the brothers and the sisters here, for having the patience to to do the research, Father God, to having the the wisdom, to having that understanding, Father God. And being able to share it with me and with other people around this world, Father God, that are not even here right now, Father God, just thank you for them. I pray that we all are going to leave this place with something and that we're going to be able to share it out there with the world. And we're also going to put it to practice in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So thank you for watching. Thank you for being there with us. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your sharing. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for everything, for your support. Uh, and everywhere you are watching, we are telling you and we are, preaching, we are praying for you. And good night. Amen.